Hi everybody, we're back. Steph and Nick are back today and um, we just want to touch upon um, premenstrual tension. Ooh, P -M -T. Yeah. Let's drink to that. Oh yes, PMT. Um, and the reason we want to touch upon it is because we both suffer from it and I in particular um, suffer from it greatly um, and have suffered from it all my life um, but now I think because I'm 42 and approaching premenopausal age in fact you're premenopausal from about the age of 35 and um, it's got worse oh, that's frightening i know it's got worse Steph. and i was recently diagnosed with premenstrual dysphoric disorder which is not actually that commonly heard of and there's not an awful lot known about it but for those of you who've ever had pmt um where you feel stressed you're angry you want to cry all the time um imagine that now times by about a thousand and imagine that starting... You suffer really, really badly. badly, don't you? And imagine that starting about 10 days before your period's due on. Yeah. Not just... You get a few good days. You get... Yes, and I'll tell you how it works. Because what happens is, when we have our normal PMT, and normal PMT yeah. is bad enough as it is, if it's bad, if you suffer yeah. from it, that usually kicks in, what, two, three days mm. before you're due on? Yeah. Moment you start, moment you start, time of the month, job yeah. comes, sort Woo! Stress is gone. Back right. down. We're right down. We're normal. Yes, yeah, so premenstrual dysphoric sort of starts 10 days before you do one. It starts in the luteal phase of your time of the month and you become really emotional. Like like normal PMT turns by about 100. Mm -hmm. And I'm a mental health nurse and I will probably diagnose myself with some kind of bipolar disorder. It is bad. Ups and downs. Terrible, terrible. And oversensitive, paranoid, um, almost verging on a slight psychosis, um, possibly sometimes feeling quite suicidal, really yeah. to that point. I've literally sat in my um, little laundry here on the floor crying, not actually knowing what to do with myself. And then I want to kill somebody. Hormones in. Oh, we all want to kill somebody. Awful. Then you'd like to kill somebody. Everybody wants to kill yeah. somebody. But you try, and this is the difficulty thing for women, and you women probably will be able to associate with this. You try and explain to somebody how it feels. That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's the others, you know what you're going through. Yes. And it's other people trying to understand that. Yes, and it's very... And, and I think the difficulty for the other person is premenstrual dysphoric disorder in particular is aimed at the people closest to you. Mm -hmm. So if you're a single mum, you're aiming at your children because yes. you're in a relationship with your children. Mm -hmm. If you're not a single parent, you're aiming at your partner. Mm -hmm. Whoever's closest to you, whoever you feed off most emotionally is who will get the full brunt of your premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And trying to explain to them that you know in your head it's not yes. right. Yeah, but it's it's, but it's how you, you almost feel. Can't do anything yeah, about you it. can't do anything yeah. about it. It's really hard. Yeah, and it, it becomes like an out of body experience. You can look down on yourself and you think, "Why am I being like this? I don't know what to do with myself." But literally, I want to tear that person's throat out, or I literally then want to go and kill myself while I'm doing it. <laughs> yes. I don't know which one I want to do first: <laughs> tear your throat or kill myself. Uh, but how can they? Like for me, I've never really suffered with not bad with PMT. I get a bit growly, but not bad with PMT. But I've noticed as I'm getting older, it's slowly starting to creep yes, in, and it gets worse. Towards and I'm getting really way. frustrated with it because I don't like it myself. It's it awful. just yeah, it's it just I don't want to feel it. But sometimes, say for Neil, it's a bit of a learning curve for him as well, and I am trying to deal with it. But there's ways I think that he could deal with it better. Okay. For example, I will wake up, maybe feel a bit gritty, and I will now, because I still recognise it, I will admit that I feel gritty. Right. So I will say, oh, one word answer, and he'll go, oh, what's wrong with you? And I'll go, look, oh, feeling man. very gritty, feeling like, you know, oh, I can't God. yet rein it in, just feeling cross. So what I do, I put up a protective barrier, yes. and I go quiet. Oh, see, I do, and you're louder. I go quiet. So I go quiet and I'll give like one or two word answers. So he'll ask me a question and I'll go, yeah, that's fine. Right? And he'll ask me another question and I'll go, yep, yeah, great. And then he'll go, what's wrong with you? And like, I have just said, I am feeling a bit gritty, <laughs> which is why I am quiet. And I just right? need to be quiet. And I just need to be quiet and I just need just that time. And then 10 minutes later, he asked me a question, and he'll go, Gosh, seriously, what is wrong? You're so grumpy. Oh, my God. And he said, first of all, And you're like, yeah. oh, my, yes, I am. And I have admitted yeah, that I, I am. And you telling me, you know, let me put it in simple terms. I'm feeling like a lion right yeah. now. I could bite 
your head off. Yeah, practically. I've, and it's not it's not in figure of speech, it's literal things. Yeah. I have put in a protective fence. The protective fence is me being quiet. If you leave me alone, if you leave this lion alone, yeah. I will be fine. If you keep on putting your hand through the fence and poking the lion... It's going to go. Yes, you're going to lose a limb. See, my, I get the opposite problem because I don't go quiet. I become an emotional wreck, needy. I think my partner's going to leave me all the time. I literally become almost... I, I hyperventilate. I have panic attacks. If he doesn't text me back within half an hour, I will physically have a panic attack. And as much as I can reassure myself in my head that there's nothing wrong, it's hand of the month, um, it, it's a full-blown, <gasps> and I'll ring, I'll ring you, <gasps> why haven't you, <gasps> and I'll get like that, and what, and it's, and it's very difficult for that person to understand that, and it's very difficult for a person to understand why a 42-year-old woman who's quite bright gets like that, mm -hmm. and it's not like that at work, I don't do it at work, I can rein it in at work, and it's, and, and it's very strange to explain to somebody why you can rein that in at work. But when you're not in effect in a relationship not, with people at work... it's not attached not, to any emotion. No emotions, Work's no connections. not attached to any emotions. I have acquaintances so at work. Don't. Yes, I don't have friendships. Yeah. I'm not in love with anybody at work. Yeah. It's all to do. And if you read the diagnostic criteria of, of premenstrual dysphoric disorder and premenstrual tension, it's all to do with your relationship. And unfortunately, it's all the brunt of the person who is with you. Yes, definitely. And what I need at that time, which is very difficult when I'm so awful, is somebody to just say, yes, Nick, yes, Nick, yes, Nick. Yep. Constantly reassure me, I which is tiring what, for that person. No, I think that's what everybody needs. If you've got PMT, though, like even in my, where I go quiet sort of thing, life would be far. And it's not like... It's hard, isn't it? Because then they go, oh my gosh, I've just got to agree with everything you do. Just make and life it easier. Is, you know what? Yes, I'm not condoning how I am. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I'm because it's to... like, oh no, you've got to bow down to me yeah. because I'm like, a bit no, I don't need No, it it's not that. like yeah. that. Yeah. It's just don't try not to start conversations that really shouldn't be started yeah. right now or, or trigger just things. Just cuddle me and just tell me yes. everything's all right and yeah. have patience. Yeah. And it's. Because we it's... both recognise we do it and I recognise that yeah. I do it. And I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I am feeling yeah. a bit gritty, but if you, if I just get if some I quiet could time, get, I'll be fine. If you could get somebody who doesn't have PMT or premenstrual dysphoric to experience it just once, yeah. the out of controlness of it, the feeling that you know what you're doing is wrong, but you physically and mentally can't stop it, and it's like a roller coaster that's running. It, I, I have tried to describe myself like I'm, I'm constantly trying to keep the lid on the bubbling volcano. Um, that when it erupts, it will erupt either to the point of me on the floor breaking my heart or erupting to the point where I literally want to throw the person out who's living with me, mm -hmm. which is awful. And I think the awful thing about it is, is for me personally, because you know you've been so bad for almost a 10 guilt. year period, you have the guilt, you have the yeah. shame, you have the neediness afterwards because you feel awful yeah. and you know you're not a bad person. Yeah. But you become somebody you actually don't recognise. You know, you saying that now, and I say I'm not too bad now, but I'm getting worse I'm, and worse I'm and worse and better. worse. We'll talk about that later. I think I'm gradually getting worse from a pain too, but I'm trying to manage it. But I, I was saying to you, going towards mom, my mom had the worst menopause, mm. and all everything you explained was kind of her yeah, menopause. Yeah, see, this is I see myself going the same direction, and I've already I've said to Nikki, apologise to Neil in advance. Okay. If I kind of lose my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because it, yeah, you just... It, it's awful. It's an awful thing it's to go I, I think it is awful. And, and I really feel for people around you as well. I feel for my daughter. Definitely. I feel for my partner. Which is why I do the protective quiet yeah. thing. So you, you know? You're lucky that you can control it. Yeah, and, and I'll walk that. out. And, and even if Neil goes, what's wrong with you again? Most times I'll just walk upstairs mm. and just kind of... <gasps> in the bedroom yeah. because I know I'm really trying to control it because I don't want to say something that I regret but then equally it's just like saying in my situation look I'm really trying hard here you need to really yeah, try and hard I, too yeah and I because, think uh, yeah. that's what we've got to try and get our partners to understand as well isn't it is that if you walk away what you're trying to do is contain the situation and you're not just being grumpy enough yeah, and I, I struggle to do that at the minute I well Mine's changed since I've been taking a load of stuff, which we'll talk about in a bit, but I've always struggled to walk away. I haven't got... And I think it's because it's very difficult for the other person in my situation to understand that I don't mean anything that I say, mm -hmm. That and if they acquiesce to me, they're not acquiescing to me, they're just trying to help me manage a very difficult... And, and I know it... Be, and, and, the, and the awful thing I think about it is, is women, as in me, and maybe you at this time, you be, it becomes very much about me. <laughs> 
and it is and, mm. and I'm mm-hmm. not about me mm-hmm. but it does at that period of time become very much about me and forgetting the other person but I can't there's not an awful lot else I can do about it because if I don't make it about me and try to manage me which is the lion trying to come out of the cage about yes. to kill people and if you don't help me help me make it about me me erupts because there's nothing I can do about it. It's hormones. There's a lot of me in there. There is a lot of me in there. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and when your hormones are ranging, trying to tell somebody you can't just do mind over matter. Mm-hmm. But we're trying to work it out. So anyway, we have got a little bit of a plan. Yes. So and, and we're both aware. It, we, we, yes, definitely. We're both aware of it. We've started to try and do supplements and all the rest of it. And, and our next vlog um, is is supplements that we take that we feel yes. helps. Definitely help. Definitely helps. But obviously, we'll vitamins that help. Yeah.